Hello everyone, this is Dr. Asma and today I'm talking about reflective practice. Uh, it sounds very wordy and sounds very concrete, but in a sense I will make it so simple that we can relate our everyday experiences to this type of learning. So to begin with, I will uh, go through what are the basic types of learning that we are equipped with or we gradually develop over time and how this reflective practice or reflective learning is different to what we do in everyday life. Probably I must say that we are doing some kind of reflection in everyday life, but it is not refined enough to be called so. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you about what are the types of learning. So as a primate, we are equipped with basic instinctive learning skills, which are just as we go through experience, we, our body adapts and learn uh, to react to it and our learning um, develops. So it is very primitive learning, very brainstem level, level learning, and we don't need to think or use our forebrain or intentions to actually um, take it on board. Uh, then we move to emotional and social learning. So this type of learning, because we are social creatures, we have a lot of feelings which, which basically differentiate us from the rest of the creatures. Um, so our emotional aspect of how to cope with stress, how to move on after making a mistake, how to relate to other, how to express our feelings, um, this all comes under the category of emotional and social, social learning. Uh, reflective practice is an advanced level of cognitive learning. In this, you, your brain actually voluntarily puts um, some thought process uh, in order to gain uh, some more insight into what has happened and what should you do uh, differently next time in order to um, be better off. Let's talk about everyday examples and everyday learning experiences. So for example, if we have, uh, if we are late, if we arrive late or forgot our keys or have parking issues, grocery list and this list goes on. Like if we have any trouble in in those areas, we we automatically or by default, we review the reasons and we say, oh, next time I will be better, I'll be careful. So this thing, I will be careful next time, is the gist of all learning experiences. And I will elaborate on this thing in order to connect our basic learning to reflective practice and learning. Uh, the most accepted model for um, reflective practice is Gibbs reflective cycle which is as follows so it describes it it is it is explained as you give the description of the event what happened you need to write a factual a statement of what actually the scenario was then you move on to the next step which is feelings what do you thought about it next you move on to feelings so what were your feelings during the process or shortly after the event happened. Then you step back. This is a process where you actively engage in learning. You step back. You have been through the experience. Uh, you have captured in your memory. It is part of your life now. And you now you debrief yourself. You step back and you rethink. You evaluate what was good or what was bad and in what way. Analysis comes when you move from your personal point of view to a bird's eye view, like a broader view of impact on your environment, impact on patient's care, impact on colleagues, on your physical and mental um, health. So you take a, a kind of a global approach to what happened in that scenario. Then you come, with, come up with some kind of a conclusion um, that, you know, in terms of this went very well, whereas if these were the shortcomings that I faced or the situation led us to. And then after those conclusion, you already know your gaps and then you put an action plan and then next time when you are in the same scenario, you are better equipped anyways. So it is not a very philosophical way or very innovative way. I would say whenever you have been through an experience, your body or your mind already adapts, already gives you signals that, you know, this went wrong, better be careful 
next time and this better be careful next time always stays with us and if you are thrown in the same situation we act you know we act better but the thing is the situation can change but if you you take some global learning points then no matter how different the next scenario is you will have some basic skills to to fight it off better so let's move on to some uh, everyday examples um, so I will say like every day you have an experience for example you had a difficult communication with your colleague uh, the day went you weren't very happy with the day you were a little grumpy and not sure about what to say what not to say but then in the evening you step back and you think exactly what might have been other reasons of this challenging situation uh, I would say try to be factual try although uh, your emotions and your feelings are a par integral part of how you reflect but try to state the f the fact as as a scene as as objective as anything just state the fact what happened just state the timeline just state what happened this after the other and the other and then you contribute your feelings and then you you take a global approach to what could have been done differently you sit at home and then you make some kind of uh, intentional effort to see that these factors were maybe contributing so next time when i communicate with the colleague i better be prepared for it i my mind is better prepared i'm more resilient and i'll stand by my point and i will take this stance in future so these things are actually done automatically in your brain you don't have to put a lot of effort but the cherry on the top is if you put an intentional effort to actively seek learning and improve your practice uh, this is also called informal reflection for example if you had a bad day you had a rough day and uh, while coming back home you ring a friend and you you know talk you talk uh, talk it through that um, what happened what you felt what was exactly wrong and then maybe in that discussion you might find actually mm, this this might have been you know this might have been the reason or I might have done this differently and it could have been better so with with mutual discussion you can find reasonable solutions and you sometimes apply them next time involuntarily and it just happens uh, to be you know gradually improves so that is how your experiences improve you this is also a kind of informal reflective learning that you have been in through an experience you are exactly relaying the situation you're contributing your feelings and you're stating some facts and and some feelings um, you're coming up with some discussion some solution and then you're applying it to, uh, to it next time so if we make this whole process more formal and write it as we think this becomes reflective practice let's move on to the most important bit which are the portfolio examples so how can you capture your reflective practice in a portfolio so i have generated some very um, uh, very everyday and very maybe you know familiar situations which could re very easily relate to anyone working in the NHS so for example if I have failed a procedure if I have failed a cannula I have failed a blood sampling a blood gas or I have failed a lumbar puncture so what next so how do I learn from my procedure it could have been so it uh, it does not necessarily has to be a failure it could have you can also say that I did it very well so how my procedure went very well you can also reflect on how it went well so you follow the same steps of stating what happened um, and what were your feelings what were the contributory factors and take a bit of a distant or a bit of a bird's eye view of the situation and write down what exactly uh, could have been better team dynamics equipment familiarization or um, patient's anxiety or getting some extra help asking uh, help timely help so you can um, modify it in both ways like I have done a successful cannulation and how 
do I want to reflect on it because uh, positive reflection also give you motivation and it's one of the things that you really must do as part of your life uh, sometimes we, we um, ignore our um, our progression and uh, you know these these can be very good opportunities to actually motivate you and boost you to do more so uh, the same steps you analyze and then you come to the conclusion and next time you're applying so um, i've just given you a, a very basic sketch of sketch of what a procedure um, reflection could look like um, another example could be a difficult communication so you were thrown in a communication with a colleague uh, not ready to make a you know discharge letter or not ready to walk down the radiology department xyz and what were your stance and your um, you know argument to support uh, to actually convince your colleague or how, how was the dialogue and what went well what you can improve and uh, how it makes you a better person next time um, I have elaborated another um, another scenario which could well be suited for your portfolio, which is colleague communication. So, for example, I have just kept it very general, very general. For example, if a nurse or a staff member feels a bit distant, or you might sometimes feel that a bit bitter or mean to you, uh, so you're just thinking in hindsight, what should I change? What has made this? Uh, you know what has given rise to this situation so uh, you, you you sit back and write some facts facts about you're new to the UN, NHS you you're new to the accents you're new to the culture you're new to the how um, uh, mechanically things work and uh, the equipment difference the communication difference it's a lot to learn it's not easy so all those those things are are a very you know trivial but very important uh, um, uh, factors in in making making you feel a bit distant or somebody being a bit different to you and then what are the reasons why you feel that the team feels more connected as compared to you being feeling more connected to them so you can state that they are local they are well known to each other and uh, maybe they have sailed the same cultural background xyz and then you analyze the situation globally that if there is a newcomer in any profession in any office in any you know walk of life you have to make your space you have to actively because your your actions are a bit magnified or a bit more louder than others so you try to be humble and you try to make your way and in that way in that process you can elaborate that you know i want to know names of my colleagues i want to call them i want to have a better direct eye contact with them i want to uh, speak for myself a bit more or in case if it comes to that level i want to speak to my supervisor and you know seek seek some kind of suggestion or i want to talk to my colleague or xyz and then it comes to your um, your action plan uh, that okay i will impl implement these changes i would also say that whenever you do some some portfolio reflection or your personal reflection do give yourself a target do give yourself a time that you can reevaluate your, yourself after actually actively working on those points that you have um, noticed because when intentionally you put your mind at work uh, it kind of uh, takes away your uh, frustrations and your limbic system when i talk about like limbic system means you have more emotional and feelings and more of behavioral reaction to it it puts more meaning to your learning it puts more motivation to your learning so i think um, i will conclude my talk here and i hope that you have got some idea of how this reflective practice is basically a form of learning how you do it every day and just by increasing a some more points you can actually call it reflective practice and then how you do it daily and how you ref you can reflect it on your portfolio so all the best and i hope this is really helpful bye